Hey guys, welcome back to Sweden or Bust, and firstly, before we get into the episode, if you've been liking this series, please hit that like button, and if you're liking it even more than that, hit the subscribe button and you'll get it every day in your inbox at lunchtime. That is, of course, until FM15 comes out. Now, if you were wondering why I haven't been talking about transfers, even though we're obviously going to be coming up to yet another transfer window coming soon, the reason for that is because I don't intend to make any transfers in the mid-season to build for next year, simply because there isn't going to be a next year. This is going to be the last season of this series, purely because by the time I've done enough episodes to fill that last series, so it's roughly between 9 and 10, 9 and 11 episodes per season, generally the way I do them. By the time I've done that, and those episodes have aired, if you like, then Football 115 is going to be out. So I'm not going to be going to be building for next season. Everything we do is going to be to try and get the success we need this year. So that be the Cup, the League, and see what we can do in the Champions League. My aims basically are to win the Cup, win the League, and try to get to that group stage of the Champions League and try our luck at it, basically. It'll be a lot more games, but I think it'd be really worth it. It'd be fun to see what we can achieve in Europe if we really, really went for it. And, yeah, we still don't know who we've got in the Champions League yet, but no, we don't. It's a shame, but we'll find out. Uh, I don't even know when we find out. Probably not until the next episode, but we'll definitely be discussing that then. So that's for sure. Right, so let's get on with the games we had in this episode. Now, we, as you can see, our form has definitely picked up. You could say that anyway. In the league, our first game of the season was against Halmstad. And... We were at home, so I figured, right, let's go out and try this. We Basically, we were pretty damn lucky in this game to get away with the 1-0. We deserved to win, but it took that John Goosen's penalty to actually give us the win. But it was three points, and then I literally just, once we came to the last 10 minutes, I didn't want to take any risks. We changed our strategy, and we managed to escape with the 1-0, because we had too many results where teams scored late equalizers against us in games that we hadn't put to bed. I just noticed there's a guy here called King Jan. That is a brilliant name. Is he any relation to Asamoah Jan? Just, I'm genuinely curious. Uh, where would it be? It would be in here, wouldn't it? Like, profile? Nah, I don't know. I thought it might be related to Asimojan, just because they had the same name. And I believe they are both Ghanaian. Yeah, so, hey, I, I just assumed he could be. Anyway, you think it would be in the database if he was. So, what we are going to do is head into our first game. What am I talking about? Right, yeah, we were looking at the Halmstad game. Although we won't, because we'd already finished that one. Then we had a great result. This is one of the results I'm most pleased with overall, because it's away at Elspore, and they'd won five out of five in the league at this point. Now, we went there, and we scraped a win. I mean, we were better than them on the night, and our strategy worked, basically. Mateus Biesmir, our captain, with a big goal from a corner, followed up by Christopher Neiman. So he's obviously filling in for Malach this year. Uh, not this year, but at the moment. And obviously Engval is coming off the bench quite a lot now. So we don't worry about Engval. He will be getting some game time this year. It's just, I wish we had a longer save going at the moment. So we could probably be using him because he's just not quite ready at the moment. Especially not when Neiman is actually playing quite well. I'm very, very impressed with some of the chances he created uh, in this game. He's, he's good because he's the sort of guy... His goal was basically him receiving the ball, playing it into the channel to Goosens. No, it wasn't what we're talking about. Not Goosens. Um, Rex, who... Was it Rex? No, it was Overstad. Playing it into the channel for Overstad, who basically just dropped it straight in the middle and Neiman was there, but he's good at picking the ball up, dropping it out to the wings, then bombing it into the box to get on the end of it. And that's what I like to see. We might need some simple football like that to get through this year. But that was too wins on the bounce for us. Now, this 1-0 here is actually going to be our highlighted game this episode for the simple fact of something you're about to see that annoyed the living shit out of me. Now, firstly, you're going to see the stats, and this is going to be basically like the Hecken game last year. Disappointing. They actually had a few more chances, and we didn't have quite as many, but the fact is we were dominating this game, and you'll see in the highlights how pissed off I would have been when this goal went in. Just wait, I'll see you there. Oh, sorry, we are apparently on... That's annoying. Okay, um, I didn't think the highlights would be in 2D, but hey, we'll do it in 2D anyway. Basically, sometimes the 2D highlights actually give you a better idea. If you want to see 2D or 3D highlights, let me know in the comments so I can decide whether we're going to stick on 2D, because I've been watching games on 2D now. It seems to have transferred over to the highlights. Yeah, let me know what you want to see. 2D or 3D highlights. 
So yeah. Anyway, yeah, we were just playing the ball around and not really doing a great deal with it. But then Alf Borgay gets it here, which, yeah, fine. Manages to play a simple one to Beersmere. But they're sort of pushing out at us and Bergstrom eventually... Pekalski, uh, Pekalski manages to eventually end up with the ball going back to Alf Borgay. But look at this. He just aimlessly whacks it into the midfield, drops down to no one, and Engelman straight over the top of him from about 40 yards. That kind of crap is so infuriating, and I wish it wasn't part... I mean, yeah, okay, it happens way more in Football Manager than it should do and would do in real life. They do need to change the dynamic on that. They actually had some more right chances in that game, so that's fair enough, but I don't want them winning with goals like that. It really fucked me up. I was so angry, and considering how well we'd actually been playing in the last couple of games. But, thankfully, we've managed to get back on the horse. We had GAIS in our next game, and wow. We absolutely obliterated them, as has kind of everyone else in this league. They had five shots, but none of them which were even on target. Neiman scored himself two goals for us, though, and that's what we like to see. He's really stepping up for us this month. And Bellstrom also got a goal, and with a 3-0 win like that, it took a little bit of a while to sort of get... Well, actually, I... I no, we, we had the game set up by the outmark, so at that point, I actually didn't see the point in changing the strategy because we were 3-0 up. If it's a little bit tighter, I sometimes do change it to try and shore things up a little bit, but I actually just wanted to get a few more goals. Local Derby was a sellout crowd for this game, I'd like to point out too, which was kind of cool. Uh, or it certainly said it was a sellout on the thing. 18th, I don't know if that is a sellout for the Gamble Levy Stadium or not. It's a strange number, but maybe they just had an odd number of seats left. Then we had the cup final against Alvita Bell. And, well, we dispatched them pretty comfortably. But it wasn't all comfortable. It took until late in the game. And as you can see, Neiman scored himself... Pff, got himself two goals. And managed to win it... Well, no, no, not too, too, too late in the game. What am I talking about? Neiman scored twice for us again. We were much, much better than them and thoroughly deserved to win the game. And Biesme, our captain, got him from a corner as well with another one. So that is the cup for the third year in a row, which guarantees us Europa League football next year. But I'd like to think winning the title and getting in the Champions League is probably going to be more of an, uh, a priority for us, even though we're not going to be able to play next year, which sucks. Next, we had a home game against Kalmar. And this was a bit more tight. It was a bit of a, an edgy game, and they'd actually been doing quite well in the league, so their performance here is not a big surprise. They actually managed to control possession against us, even though we've got a lot of things set to try and stop that and try and keep control. So I had to change quite a lot of tactics. I was quite pleased with my uh, tinkering in this game, and eventually, Neiman, once again, that's like five goals he's got for us this month already. He's gonna have, he's having a belter of a season. Stepped up and made it 1-0 with a great drilled cross, and he's filling in for Malich extremely well. And to be honest... Anyone who says Malich was a monster, this guy is looking like he could be even better than that. For us this season, the way we're playing, we're scoring goals when he's playing in the team. So I'm worried. I'm thinking even when Malich is fit, he may not be my preferred starter just because Neiman is doing so well here. And yeah, we managed to win the game, which was great because it got us back on the horse again. And that means that, you know, four wins out of your last five league games, it certainly did start to rocket us up the league. Then we had a really disappointing one against Jewel Garden. And... This was disappointing because they scored a really, really irritating goal. And uh, I'm going to have to show you the highlights of this one too, because it so very much annoyed me. In fact, I'll see you guys in the highlights because this game is so infuriating. See you guys in the highlights. Okay, so what kind of happened in this game? We weren't that much better than them, but I sort of worked out a tactic and I was hoping we could try and snatch something from the game. And it comes to around about the 50 minute mark. Alvarez whacks a long ball up into the midfield and we managed to keep control of it. Bellstrom and Augustinsson, some nice play. And the aim in this game was to exploit the flanks, basically. That's what our aim was. But I don't know what happened there. Why did he not just pick the ball up? The ball was on the floor. It looked like he just ran over it. Then eventually a long cross comes in, which bounces off the crossbar, comes straight down to Broberg, who smashes it into the net. I mean, Jesus very, very annoying, because I don't think they deserved it at that point. Then, 52 minutes gone, we managed to get... I changed some stuff, I, I messed with some tactics, and I was quite pleased with what we did. Running over Stad's ball here, down to Augustinsson, into, and Neiman with the flick on at the near post, to score yet another goal for us, and I thought, yes! It was an almost immediate equaliser, and that was good. Things were starting to look much more cushy. Then, around about the hour mark, that same left-hand side, which was what we kind of targeted before the game, leaves all this space for Salmonson over on the right, and then a quick little trip through the middle, Smedberg dances ball in, Malich now, who'd just come on as a substitute, within 
seconds of his introduction had made it 2-1 to us and that was when things got excellent they actually had a man sent off straight after that and against 10 men I thought here we go so we dropped a little bit deeper and then just because you know playing against 10 men I didn't want to invite them onto us but at the same time I also didn't want to get caught out this was annoying Broberg's ball in and then just what actually happens, basically, if you see that in 3D, you'd hate it even more. Basically, the ball is on the line. Bellstrom just kicks it, like, full-on blasts it into his own net. I don't know what he's doing. Ugh, I hate that shit. Why would you do that? No one would do that in real life. He full-on blasts it into his own net. It, there was no excuse for that kind of crap. But it happened, and we've been caught a couple of times by that this season already. And it's turned a draw there into a loss, or potentially even win. And, a, 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 well a good hard fought win here with good tactics into a into a draw and it's annoying but here we are in the league i'm going to stop complaining because you know nobody wants to hear that we are sixth so we're actually not that far well we're actually at five points off the top which isn't a great deal further than we were in the last episode i think we were seven points off the top at the end of the last episode so things have definitely caught up but not by much we do still need to get back into that battle AIK are top at the moment with Elfsport. Helsingborg are in there too. It's sort of a top three at the moment with then Kalmar, Jules Gordon, us, and then Malma, who, oh, pardon me, are not really involved. But you'll see that GAIS, G G A I S have actually somehow managed to win a couple of games and are not in the relegation zone, although they are in the playoff spot, despite the fact that they've got a minus 21 goal difference. They're getting battered by just about everybody, but they are nicking the odd one nil and it's working for them at the moment. Uh, there you're for and North Shipping are down there too. So, you know, we can do this. We can do this. We can get back into it. That poor start can be recovered, and I really hope it will do. And let's just have a look before I show you the stats at what fixtures we have next one. So we've got Hecken away. I really want to win there desperately. Orebro at home. We need to win that because that's revenge for a lot of things. Plus, we've been doing quite well against them. Malma away. I'll take a draw. Uh, Vitabo at home. I'd want to win. And Bravo Poikana away. I'd want to win. That's... We need to get... What so? I'm saying three, six... I don't want to lose there. Uh, seven... I want 13 points next month. That's going to be a massive ask. But I genuinely think we're capable of doing it. And that should, provided they don't have some Superman runs going on, get us back into the battle for the title again, basically. It's a good month for us, I think. Anyway, let's get the stats so you can see who's been doing so well so far. Turn off that damn thing. Right. Top appearance maker is Belstrom and Alphagay, although Salomonson with that one off the bench is not bad either. Top goal scorer, Neiman. Brilliant. He started seven games and scored eight goals for us, one off the bench. He's got an assist as well. He's been superb for us this so far this season. I cannot... I don't think Malach is going to get that many games for us at the moment just because of the sheer quality that Neiman's been able to produce when in front of goal. A couple of braces as well, which is excellent. Most assists, Augustinson. He's really getting some good work down that left-hand side now. And Goosens as well still has five assists. In fact, I think he had three in the last month. Malango as well. We're getting lots of assists from lots of areas of the pitch, which is good to see. Most man of the matches, Neiman and Malach have now got three each. And Neiman, there's no surprise at how well he's done getting himself into that place. Um, Pekalski still has an 86 pass completion. Which is good, but Augustinson, our left back, has got a great pass completion. When you compare him to the right back, Salomonson, who's frankly also pretty decent. Uh, worrying signs there in terms of pass completion. Look at that. Oh, I suppose it's mostly long kicks, so that, that's forgivable. But Belstrom at 75 needs to work on that. Average rating? Neiman. Neiman is just, and I can consider him with the amount of games he's played now, to be having a great season. And I'm hoping we can get it to continue. Right. Join us at the end of June and see if we've actually managed to achieve those 13 points for the end of the next episode. Who knows? We will have to wait and see. If you've been liking this, leave a like on the episode, please. And if you've been liking it even more than that, hit that big old subscribe button. And I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye.